you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lines. You may trot me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Mm. Just like moons, like the suns, with surfacy of tides. Just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? Shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I, cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my old backyard. You shoot me with your words, you cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but like air, I will rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise? That I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history, shame, I rise up from a past that is rooted in pain. I rise, I am a black ocean, leaping and wide. Welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wonderfully clear. I rise bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Even after hearing these words written by the great poet, Maya Angelou, we can say that we have risen but we still have more rising to do. Let me say that one more time. We have risen, but we still have more rising to do. Uh, when we consider the Trayvon Martin case, I find it very unnerving uh, that when we look at the few details that have been leaked out uh, that, that prove to us that George, George Zimmerman should have already been arrested, I, I find it dumbfounding that nobody has taken an effort to make, the, to make it happen. Uh, but really, in all actuality, this case proves the further injustice that has taken place against us since we've been here in this place that we call the United States of America. Uh, when we investigate the conversation that George Zimmerman had with the police dispatcher, we find that it was evident that George Zimmerman had already made up in his mind that Trevon Martin was guilty. Ah, he told the dispatcher that this guy looks like he's up to no good or he's on drugs or something. He said it's raining and he's just walking around looking about. Now the fact that it was raining proves to us that that was the reason why possibly he had the hood on in the first place. Um, then the dispatcher said, okay, is this guy white, black, or Hispanic? To which George Zimmerman said, he looks black to me. Uh, during the course of the conversation, the dispatcher asked Zimmerman if he was following the person, and he said yes, and the dispatcher told him not to do so. Also, uh, that right there tells me that Zimmerman initiated the conversation that took place between the two, okay? Uh, Zimmerman told the police that he himself was on the way to the grocery store, and, a, and he saw Trevon Martin walking through a gated community, all right? He says, then he called 911 because Trevon Martin looked suspicious. Zimmerman said that he was walking back to his SUV when Trevon Martin approached him. They exchanged words. He punched him in the face, knocked him to the ground, and began beating and smashing his head to the ground. Now, Trevon Martin's girlfriend came forward with this report. She said that she was talking on the phone to the young man, and he told her, somebody is following me, and I felt afraid. She told him to run. He said, no, nah, I don't want to run. But eventually he did run, only to meet back up with George Zimmerman. And then she says he can hear Trevon Martin asking him, why are you following me? And Zimmerman asked him, what are you doing around here? Later she recalled that the phone conversation was dropped because she lost him on the phone. Uh, when I look at what happened to young Trevon Martin, I see that he was guilty of having a cell phone. I see he was guilty of having a pack of Skittles and an Arizona iced tea. And he was guilty for being black with a hoodie on on a rainy day. Amen. A uh, TV reporter, Geraldo Rivera, had the nerve and the audacity to say that Trevon Martin was just as guilty as Zimmerman was for what happened to him simply because he had a hoodie on. Uh, if you want to go deeper with me into the past of America, if you want to get deeper, we can say that those KKK who were the hoods long time ago, who missed black people, they were guilty. Come on, somebody. And even some undercover politicians wore, wore hoods. 
chief priests and chiefs of the law that he must be killed and on the third day be raised. He prophesied, he spoke it. Uh, Matthew 17 and 23, 22 to 23 says, when they came together in Galilee, he said, the son of man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him and on the third day he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. He said it the second time. And the third time, it was Matthew chapter 20, verses 18 through 20. He says, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the chiefs of the Lord to condemn him to death. And will and will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. So he kept on saying it. Even though I'm going to suffer for just a little while, I'm still going to raise back to life. Come on, somebody. See, like I said, you got to speak stuff over your own life. In this life, like Job said, we're going to be, we were born of a woman, and we're going to be faced with many days of trouble. So even though you're going to be faced with many days of trouble, you got to speak over your own life. No matter the hell I go through. I'm still going to rise. Even though I got to tread through deep water, I'm still going to rise. Even though folk talk about me and slander my name, I'm still going to rise. It, it, it's determined by your attitude and sometimes what you say. You see, sometimes you got to speak deliverance and elevation over your own life. You got to speak it over. If nobody else ever tells you that you're going to make it, or you go come through, or you or, or the door will be open for you. You gotta tell it to yourself. Even if it means you looking in the mirror and telling yourself, yes, I'm going through some hard times right now, but I'm still going to rise. I'm going through hard times economically and money-wise, but I'm still going to rise. I don't have a job right now. I'm just in between jobs, but I'm still going to rise. I don't have a house per se right now, but I'm still going to rise. Come on, somebody. You see, even when it feels like you're going through hell, just know that God is setting you up to get the glory out of your situation, okay? So when you're going through something, you got to keep talking yourself through it. you got to be like David and encourage yourself, all right? Because it's when you encourage yourself, it helps you to keep the faith. But just know that all that you go through, God is setting you up to get the glory out of it. Now, now, now notice what Jesus said. His attitude was, not my will, but your will be done. That was his attitude. His resurrection was also had to do with his attitude about the whole situation. Because he told the Father, God, I know you can let this cup pass for me. I know you have the power and the ability to let it pass. But it says, even if you don't, I want your will to be done in my life. Come on, somebody. Meaning, he said, Lord, basically what Jesus was saying, Lord, if I have to go through this, for somebody else to, to, to see that you're real. If I have to go through this for you to get the glory, then let it be so because I'm still going to rise. Come on, somebody. Oh, because notice, whenever God takes you to a place where it feels like you're at, the, at your lowest point, just remember that one day he's going to raise you back up to perfection. Come on, somebody. Oh, you see, he had an attitude of anticipation and expectation, and he knew that God would bring him out of the grave. You see, you have to have an attitude of expectation and anticipation and know that God is going to bring you out. Come on, somebody. So you got to pray, think, and speak your way through a thing sometime. Come on, somebody. Now, when we look at Matthew 27, 64, and 66, it says, So give the order uh, for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell people that he was raised from the dead. This last deception will keep will be worse than the first. Says, take a guard, Pilate answered. Go and make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. The second point I want to make is nothing or no one can keep you from rising, okay? All right. All right. Nothing or no one can keep you from rising. Think about this. They thought that because they secured the tomb first with the stone, that Jesus was not going to come out. Then they said, seal the stone with a piece of cord and some clay to make sure that nobody would go in and take the body out. 
And then they said, make sure you put armed guards in front of the stone to keep people from going in and to keep Jesus from coming out. Come on, somebody. Oh, but, 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 but I stopped by to let somebody know that whenever it's time for you to come out of a thing, whenever it's time for the door to be open, come on, somebody. Whenever it's time for your parole, come on, somebody. Whenever it's time for your, your release, can't no demon in hell, can't no man on earth stop you from rising out of the thing that God has called you to rise out of. Come on, somebody. You see, it's obvious that they did not know Jesus' father. Come on, somebody. You see, everybody don't know who your daddy is. Come on, somebody. People think that when they put you in a place, you're going to stay there. But see, obviously, they don't know who you're related to. Obviously, they don't know what kind of DNA you got up in your body. They don't know that you got some spiritual DNA that gives you power to rise. Come on, somebody. They, 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 they thought that he was going to stay right there where he was. They thought that they were going to keep him down and keep him in a dark place. All right. Now, now it, 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 it's a term that young people would call, say that they say that that person is a beast, you know, that that person is a beast, and that means that they're real good at what they do. So, if y'all don't mind, I want to, I want to put that title on Jesus just for illustration's sake. Y'all don't mind. I, 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 now, 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 he, 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 he they, they gave him an illegal trial under false accusations. Okay, all right, he took it like a beast. He was a man. Okay, they, they beat him in the face. And spit on him, but he took it like a beast. He took it like a man. All right. All right. They beat him on the women post with a cat and nine tails, but he beasted it out on him. He took it like a man. Okay. Go they ahead. put the crown of thorns on his head, but he was a beast with it. He took it like a man. They put the nails in his hands and put the nails in his teeth. They pierced his side, but he was a beast with it. He took it like a man. Now I know some people say LeBron James is a beast. Some people say Kobe Bryant is a beast in what they in what he do. Some people say that Kevin Durant is a beast in what he does. But can I let somebody know nobody is as beast as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. He was so beast with it that even death couldn't hold him. Come on, somebody. Oh, Satan thought he had him. Death thought he had him. But he got real beastly with it. He said, wait a minute. Oh, you thought you had me. Somebody know that there's gonna be some times in your life where God is gonna flex some muscle to get you out of 
whatever you're in. God may flex muscle and remove some people out of your way. Come on, somebody. And remove some people out of your life. Come on, somebody. God will go to the extreme to get you to rise up. He will even remove you from a job when people are talking about you. Come on, somebody. Because he's trying to get you to rise up. God will even remove you from a neighborhood where people don't respect you or, or they only deserve your time because he's trying to get you to rise up. But God will go to the extreme. Come on, somebody. Because whenever God sends power down from the heavens to the earth, that means something is going to happen. Come on, somebody. Oh. And I like what Romans 8 and 39 says, neither depth nor height nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is, that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that means that nothing can separate me from God. That means if I'm in a dilemma or if I'm in a trial or a test, if I'm being talked about or if my back is up against the wall, that means he loves me so much to come down from heaven, to get down to the earth, to see what it is that I'm going through. Come on, somebody. And I believe that God loves each and every one of you so much that when he sees you in a, in a, in a, in a, in a place where, be, where you're being pressed on every side, he will not leave you in that place for too long. Come on, somebody. Because he will step in and flex muscle. Come on, somebody. Even God himself will step in and get beat with it. Wait a minute. You messed up with my son, come on somebody. Yeah. You messed up with my daughter. Yeah. You better get your hands off right now. Come yeah. on somebody. Because God is going to get you to rise. Come on in the house somebody. Yeah. 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 You got to make up in your mind. That even though I'm going through this stuff right here. Even though what I'm going through does not feel good right now. I'm going to think myself through it. Come on somebody. I'm going to speak myself through it. All right. My attitude is this. I'm too stubborn to stay where I am. Come on, buddy. You see, you got to get real stubborn with it sometimes. You got to be like a mule, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm in a situation right now, but I'm too stubborn to stay here because I got too much crazy faith in the Lord to know that he's going to bring me out. Come on, buddy. You see, your faith will open doors for you. Your faith will cause your way out. Your faith will cause for God to make a way for you. Come on, buddy. Your faith and prayers, the, the fervent and factual prayers of the righteous, they still a bell of much. Come on, somebody. So your prayer and your faith is still worse today. Come on, somebody. But I'm still going to rise. But I'm still going to rise. So somebody, you may be going through something right now, and you may feel like it's the end. You may feel like it's over. You may feel like there is no hope. You may feel like you laid all your cards on the table and you lost the game. But see, just like when you're playing stage, you always got a partner. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Oh, see, see, your partner knows your hand. Come on in the house, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and if your partner is, is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that means when you, when, you, when you threw out the hand and you thought you lost the book, that's when he comes down with the joker and trumps everything on the table. Come on, somebody. So just because you're in a place right now and it seems like it's over, it seems like you're done, just know that you shall rise up out of that place that you're in. Come on, somebody. But you got to believe in the Lord. And see, just like God gave him power to come out, don't you think he will give you the same power to come out too? Because that spirit that raised Jesus Christ in the dead, that's, a, that's the same Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you. But see, sometimes we forget that, all right? Sometimes we lose sight on God, we lose sight on Jesus, and we lose sight on the Spirit, and we forget that we too are powerful. Don't you understand this, that God, has, he poured some of himself in you when he created you. He said, let us make man in our likeness and our image. So that means that when he, when he created you, he began to pour some of himself into you, all right? And he put some power on the inside of you. He put certain abilities on the inside of you. He spoke certain things into your life. He said, I know it all about you. I will have plans for you. I want you to prosper and be successful. Come on, somebody. God would never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, somebody. So that means that he has given you the power and the ability to yet still rise. But yet I shall 